All right, we made it to week two, amazingly, of the Locked On Nebraska podcast. We are ever closer to the spring game. We got thoughts as always. Join us. You are Locked On Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Our title sponsor today is LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, here we go, Mitch. Uh, tax day. Um, you should have probably already oh, no. had that uh, locked away by now. Uh, I'm also going to apologize right off the rip here if my voice sounds any different uh we we may get into some mowing talk a little bit later in the show but oh yeah we're talking uh, we're talking about mowing connor the allergies have uh have struck with a with a vengeance so um we're uh this is like the first thing i do every morning much like this is your first listen every morning this is like the first thing i do so my voice takes a second to get warmed up but uh we still got a lot of stuff to talk about um we'll we maybe touch on some baseball from over the weekend um as well as they headed to a eight game homestand now but like I said in the open there, we are another day closer to the spring game. There was a, a big kind of, you know, marker scrimmage over the weekend yeah. for Nebraska football. Um, so we're going to probably dive into a little bit of that straight off of the bat here. I, I like, Mitch, how the only thing we got from that just officially from Nebraska so far, and we'll, we're, we'll, we'll hear more about it this week, was like a, tw- I think it was a 22-second 20 video yeah. Um, yeah. of, and there was basically one throw Per quarterback, yeah. which I mean, that seemed kind of purposeful, right? Nebraska's taking the contrived quarterback race to a new level, or it did on Sunday. It took like 24 hours to post that that vid- video on social media from the scrimmage. I was wondering, I was left left waiting on Saturday night, like very very anxious. What happened in the scrimmage? And you know, you rely on these sketchy reports from former players, not that the former players are sketchy or anything like that, but it's you're unsure exactly like was this person at the scrimmage who's talking right. about what they saw at the scrimmage? It's closed to us in the media, but there are plenty of people who are on the inside. So information gets out and we heard that all three quarterbacks threw the football and the um the the, the video that Nebraska posted did in fact confirm that Heinrich Harburg, Daniel Kalen, and Dylan Raiola threw the football and each completed at least one pass. It, and and exist. I mean, so we were wondering about that. So so that's yeah. good. Mitch, I actually have a thought about this. Like, I I really think that their approach to spring ball. Um, and I know everyone wants to know about the quarterback race, but I think we've gone a little too far down the rabbit hole during the spring or around here for as long as I can remember now. In the idea of position battles, like. It's yeah. spring ball and you can make you can make up ground in a position battle during spring ball. I don't think you can win a position battle during spring ball. I think the coaches would probably tell you that as well. So like I really appreciate that they are um whether whether it's contrived or not, whether it's real or not with the quarterback competition. I, I really appreciate how they seem to be just practicing. And I and I know that True. sounds kind of weird, but they they seem to actually just be taking the approach of day by day. Um, we're going to get better as a team and it's not about position battles right now. It's not about any of this other stuff. Like we are trying to accomplish something so that we could put ourselves in the best position to win football games in late August and, and in September. I, I, I appreciate it. I think it's pretty refreshing and I don't need to talk about position battles in in the spring i just i really don't position battles are super easy for us to get into and for me to write about and others yep. to talk about um it's kind of a crutch uh, of coverage and conversation about spring football because you're looking for something like you can do position breakdowns like let's break down the running backs and talk about all five guys and that kind of leads into the conversation of position battles 
So I don't think you, I agree with you. You can't win a position necessarily in the spring unless like your, your direct competition gets injured and is out for eight months. Um, you can lose a position battle in the spring. I, I will, yep. I, I, I believe that. And also um, you can win a position battle before the spring. Um, as we've seen the last couple of, of years at Nebraska with Casey Thompson and Jeff Sims. They walked into the spring as quarterbacks at Nebraska who had already secured the jobs for the most part to start the season as the number one guy. So with that being said, big picture then, or small picture if we want to, because the quarterback part is obviously really important. Between now and when the spring game happens in um, – you know, less than two weeks now, I guess where, what do we want to, maybe not so much. What do we want to see? Cause we don't get a window into it every day. What do we want to hear? Like where, where, what do, what kind of tone do we want the, the coaches to have? And, and, and what do we want them to be saying at the end of spring ball, as it pertains to this, this team getting, getting better um, toward August. Well, having said everything that I said and that you said, I still want to hear more about the quarterbacks. I, I Me still, too. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to see them for more than twenty seconds on on Twitter. Um, I still, I still, that's still far and away. Then maybe not far and away because I'm interested in the wide receivers. I'm interested in Dante Dowdell as a running back. Not that, not that I think that he's going to be the 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 bell cow necessarily, but he's new. We know what Nebraska has in Emmett Johnson. We know what Nebraska has in Ramir Johnson. Gabe Irvin is not really is not practicing this spring. Quentin Ives um, has has um, you know we'll see about him how much how much work he gets this in in the spring game. So I just I want to see the quarterbacks. I think we know what 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 what's going on with the defense. Tony White's going to put a great um, product on the field in August. There aren't really concerns about that. So I, I want to see the quarterbacks, um, yeah. and, and the new players. So I, I want to hear more of the same from the coaches about the way that, um, the leadership is coming along the way that older players are, are working. I wrote about the offensive line. We talked a lot about the offensive line last week on the show, and I wrote about it in a story that's up this morning, Monday morning, uh, on the athletic about kind of the mix of old versus new and really kind of a window also into why the players love Donovan Riola um, as much as they do. They, they all had words on, on Thursday. And then we're going to get, we're going to get a window into some practice. Um, I believe on Tuesday this week, there's an open, an open period. I'm still kind of trying to come down from the weekend of, uh, yeah. of uh, you know, just being on the baseball field coaching all week. But I think Tuesday is, is, is open open window one more time into spring practice. So um, I'm going to be watching the quarterbacks this this time. I think. Well, let me let me add one more thing to that because it's uh, we can have the quarterback conversation. I think it's really healthy and productive, and there's a lot of intrigue there because there's two guys who are freshmen and they come in with super different backgrounds, and and it's interesting. And there's a guy who you know if you look if you were writing a college football magazine preview magazine at the beginning of the year, you'd be like, oh, that guy's the starter. And um, it, it's clearly not that way in Nebraska right now. So we can have, there's intrigue in the quarterback situation. It doesn't have to, like, we don't have to make it about the race every day. Yeah, we don't have to make right. it about that's the battle point. every day. And so I think that's kind of one thing that I'm thinking about. Like, it's interesting that, you know, how, how Daniel Kalen has um, really seemed to, you know, adjust pretty well to the speed of things with his accuracy, maybe not all that surprising. And it's, it's interesting that Dylan Raiola has made some of the plays that he's made, even in the small video clips that we've seen. And it's interesting that they keep talking about Heinrich Harburg the way that they do, and that he has taken them underneath their wing. It doesn't have to be about who's one, two, three at this point. It's just like, okay, let's see where these guys are at. And then we can talk about what position they're in in the fall. Although I, I say that while all at the same time, knowing that we're going to talk about what position they're in, because everyone is going to want to know who's going to take that first snap in a couple of Saturdays. Number two corner interested in that. And then I'm also interested in the, in the wide receivers and just how good the transfers uh, banks and Nair actually are. And then who's playing right behind those guys. If it's, if it's Jalen Lloyd, if Demetrius Bell is as advertised. So there's still plenty left for me. Six practices left this spring. The last one is April 27th, where 
60,000 people or so will be inside Memorial Stadium. We're hoping for for good weather next Saturday, a little later in the spring. So maybe that'll happen. Um, that's going to wrap our first segment. Uh, thanks for sticking with us through one week of the show. If you've just found us, please subscribe and follow on Twitter at LockedOnNEB. You can email us at LockedOnNEB at gmail.com. And of course, listen, subscribe, and download on all of the podcast audio platforms. When we're back, we are going to talk about some other stuff. Maybe not so much directly related to what happened in the scrimmage on Saturday. See you after the break. All right, Mitch Sherman here for LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. It has the tools that you hope to find for the right professionals for your team, faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even though, even though for those who are actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the, might not be open to the perfect role. In a given month, more than 70% of LinkedIn users do not visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com locked on college terms and conditions apply. Okay, Connor. Um, how was your weekend? We're going to get into uh, some other talk here. I'm, I'm curious uh, how things went. What'd you do? Did you get out and watch some uh, watch some sports? Did you watch golf? Um, I, I hear you maybe that, that, that you mowed the lawn. What's going on with <laughs> yeah. you? Uh, this yeah. Weekend? So I, I was I was um, over the last couple of days. It's been like a bit on 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 my show about how it was going to be uh, gas mowing opening day, mm -hmm. and because um, I haven't been home a lot of the recent weekends, so. So we finally did squeeze in um, an hour or so uh, to just do like the front yard on Saturday. This is I I had to because I also uh, work with the Omaha Storm Chasers out at Warner Park. So I was there on Saturday and Sunday as well. I spent like a lot of the hours of my weekend outside, which I was very happy about. We were in the like mid 80s around here all weekend. It was awesome. Last night to finish it off, I watched uh, Billy Joel at live at Madison Square Garden. That oh, was beautiful. very rudely cut off at the end during the crescendo of the whole conference. He, or the uh, the the concert he was doing, Piano Man, and it was like almost over. And it was like, here comes the local news. It was ten thirty. I was so that was a oh, no. horrible way to end my weekend. Uh, but the rest of it was really good. So you got the yard mode. You just got the front yard mode. Was your was your lawn? It's it's. It's mid-April here. Was your lawn like? Was it overtaking your 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 driveway, your sidewalks? What was the what was the condition here? Yeah, so it was. Um, it, it it hadn't like looking at the totality of it. It wasn't you know completely green yet. Like not all the way through anyway. Um, but there was some real thick spots, and so I'm looking at it right now. That's why I'm turned that way. I did get the back mode after I got back from that game on on Saturday, which is good because I hate to have like the uneven unevenness of it, but. The first cut, so the, so you're the lawn guy. So the I've been told that the first cut that you have to go lower. Now, do you are you one of the people who actually knows why you do the things you do with your lawn, or you just like hear these things and then try to apply them into your daily practices? Because I'm the latter. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just hear the stuff and I'm like, that sounds like a great idea. So. Yeah, lawn guy. You know, I don't know if I want to like go. You know, put myself into that into that box. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe I like to work on my on my yard. I like the the peace and serenity that it allows me. You know, stick in the AirPods, listen to a podcast or some music, get out there, work on the lawn. It's kind of nice. Um, I enjoy it, especially in like April and May, and then and then I get tired of it. I will say, and maybe this makes me a lawn guy. Like I have a thirteen year old son. 
and he's ready and willing to mow my yard, but I'm not ready and willing to give him the lawnmower, give him wow. control of the lawnmower. Yeah. I kind of want to, I kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit territorial about it. Um, I'd like him maybe to start on someone else's yard. Can he do that? Like, it's like a step up before he can actually get the controls um, of, of, of my yard. I mean, you <laughs> could say like, I'm yard. <laughs> Like, are you a car guy? If you don't really know anything about cars, like you just, you just, you, I, I, you pump your gas. Like you, I don't, I don't, I don't work on my mower. I take my blade into the hardware store and get it sharpened once a year. Um, I do, yeah. I do have conversations. Uh, I, I go to a certain lawn and garden, uh, store that I've been frequenting. I've been a home, homeowner for over 20 years. So I've been going to this place since then. And um, you know, we don't, we're not going to do any free advertising here. If they, if we, we want some local sponsors, um, they're welcome to, uh, to jump on board. You can sponsor our show locally. If you'd like to do that, reach out to us at locked on NEB at gmail.com. And I'd like to have conversations at said store about why we do what we do with our yard. So maybe that does make me long guy, but yeah, I know. Um, I, I, I take it down pretty low, not so, not super low. I mean, you don't want to be scraping the dirt on your first row. Right. First and last one of the year, I take it down just to kind of clean things up. You know, in the spring, you got to get those leaves and the dead grass out of there, give it some room to grow. Um, so yeah, I, I do that, and it, I, I listen to you and and um, and John and Josh on your on sixteen twenty the zone on Friday, I believe, and you guys were going over this lawn mowing stuff. And, and some of the questions that were being asked were like, so remedial to me that it was just like slowly killing me when, when, when you guys were talking, I think it was even John who I'm a little bit disappointed, um, because you know, he's also a longtime home homeowner. And like we, you guys were talking about the pre-emergent or the prevent fertilizer that you put down at the beginning of the year. And, you know, he was, he seemed to be unclear on why you would not want to put that down on the bare spots in your lawn. Like Connor, I took, I took towels out of my basement, like old towels out of my basement and covered up a couple spots in my yard. Um, when I put my prevent down like two weeks ago, so it wouldn't get into those areas and I can go back after when, when the ground's a little warmer and put down some, some seed. Yeah. That's the, that's where I'm at. So the conclusion that John and I came to is, is exactly what I said before. I, I mean, he's, he's basically, so I got like this spreader too. And so, so you kind of know what you're doing. So I got this spreader. I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. If I ever need to put down something, you know, just take a walk around the yard or something just like the that. settings. You need to I calibrate it, throw it in there, whatever it is. It looks good. Throw it in there. It could be a hodgepodge of, I have no idea what it is. And then I just start walking around my yard. I don't care about where it goes. It just, it's like the, the mo the process of, of improving the yard and making the yard look better is more of like you said before it's more of a a personal thing like it just makes you feel better and makes you feel more whole as far as how the actual yard is looking itself i want it to look good but i i think i lack the ceiling on my law knowledge to take it to the next level i like i've i've made improvements i'm happy with where i'm at right now but i may be bumping up against my ceiling you know, just on, on where I could really go with this thing, which is, yeah. Talk to me, know. talk to me Sorry. after the show or um, and I'll give you, I'll give you um, a place to go where you can have, you can find out if you want to do that, if you want to do that. I mean, it's good that you have a spreader and that you're throwing, you're throwing stuff on your lawn. It'll probably be fine, but it's possible also that you could kill your entire yard by doing <laughs> that. So, you know, <laughs> you never know. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's worth the risk. Just put some water on it, on it afterwards and, and you'll probably be okay. So, um, yeah. and continuing with our with our hodgepodge of of weekend activities, Nebraska football picked up two commitments for the class of 2025 over the weekend. And Jackson Carpenter of Lincoln Southwest, he's the son of former Nebraska tight end Tim Carpenter. And then on Sunday, Bryson Hayes of Mays, Kansas, um, another wide receiver, pledged to the Huskers. He had offers from Kansas and Kansas State. Um, still does have offers from Kansas and Kansas State. Of course, these commitments are not official until December, but uh, when they sign. But that's um, you know a nice little jump start for Nebraska. What it wanted to do in the spring was was add to this class. 
Um, it'll continue to work on those those efforts. Uh, and then June is generally the big month in, in yep. recruiting for Matt Rule because the official visits are going and they've got the camps. And that's when they uncover the uh, the real diamonds in the rough as uh, as as Rule sees it. Yeah, we're not that far away from that either. So we're, we're going to get closer and closer. And then all of a sudden, June, July, August rolls around. Your class is going to be, um, you know, theoretically for Nebraska, hopefully relatively full. Um, and then, you know, by the time you get to December, really these days, Mitch, I mean, I, I talk about the recruiting calendar all the time on my show, like, but these days, by the time the season starts, I mean, it's done. You, you hope to be close to done. I, I, and I think that's kind of where Nebraska's at right now as they hit their groove a little bit in recruiting. Nebraska did add a fairly important commitment in Dylan Raiola in, in December last year, just before signing day. So there are some things that can happen late in the process, but but yeah, you're right. It's 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 um, from a number standpoint, you're getting close to being done by um, by the time you get to the Fourth of July, really. So um, the other thing this weekend that I want to briefly mention is Nebraska baseball. The Huskers lost a series at Rutgers, uh, rubber game on Sunday, six to four. Rutgers gets the win. So kind of this this uh, this lull, this midseason lull for Nebraska that started um, a couple Tuesdays ago with a loss at Creighton, and then you saw a loss at Kansas. Um, one loss against Ohio State at home and now two against Rutgers. Um, you know, I, I said last week that Nebraska was getting in some dangerous territory perhaps for its um, certainly its hosting potential in the in the tournament, but even its its regional hopes. So Nebraska's at home on Tuesday night at Haymarket Park against the Jays. Important game for Nebraska for sure. And then Maryland, which is traditionally a strong program in the Big Ten, is coming into Lincoln on, on the weekend. That's a giant week. I mean, that, by the way, that game tomorrow is going to be, um, th that'll have some juice to it because it will. I mean, N Nebraska needs it really bad. Creighton's coming off a two out of three um, loss over the weekend as well to, to Xavier on the road. So they need, they both need it bad for their RPI. They're both looking, you know, they both looked like at large teams. Um, if we would have done this segment a week ago and now it's, you know, life in the Big Ten and in the Big East in baseball, it, it it happens fast. You're there's very little difference between for for these Midwestern teams from making the NCAA tournament, making your regional to all of a sudden not making your conference tournament or something like that. And I don't I, think either of those teams absolutely. are in danger, but it's just the gap is is so so small. Yeah, that's Big East and Big Ten baseball for you. A little different than the Big Twelve. So before we get to our final segment, we're going to talk about Troy Dannon to close the show. Um, just want to share some information about Locked On's NFL Mock Draft. It's live on th this Wednesday, April 17th, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central, to hear who the Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football ex angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on Wednesday, April 17th, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 channel on YouTube or free on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Hey, it's Connor and Mitch here for the FanDuel Sportsbook. It's playoff time. That's right. It's heating up in the NBA and in the NHL. Baseball is, of course, in full swings. This is usually where we uh, mention our Kansas City Royals, although they lost two out of three over the weekend to the Mets. No big deal. Uh, they'll, they'll be just fine. Guess what? FanDuel is your place to bet on everything under the sun. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. That is guaranteed. Once again, I'm going to repeat this slower. 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And so you can bet on everything as it pertains to the NHL playoffs, the NBA playing games are tomorrow, and you can do it all in that that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Head to FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can make your first bet an automatic win. That is FanDuel, and that is America's number one sports book. All right, uh, Mitch, back for the third and final segment here on a Monday as we get started with week two of the Locked on Nebraska podcast. Once again, you mentioned it earlier. I want to thank everybody who uh, who found us in week one and 
will continue to grow. Certainly will say something along the way that'll uh, resonate with somebody. So uh, we welcome everybody so to the Locked On Nebraska podcast. Okay, um, you know, I was I was doing a little um, thinking about some of the topics for the week on 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 various shows, and I and, and you mentioned last week, Mitch, that that ESPN was in town um, doing a story, and and I and I finally got around to reading that last night. Kind of some interesting stuff from from Troy Dan and talking about the future of revenue sharing in 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 college athletics um, as he starts to become comfortable or more comfortable in in the job and where he's at right now. It'll be interesting to see what his first you know his first couple moves are and and sort of how he positions Nebraska and how he shapes up the athletic department early in his tenure. Yeah, it's a big stretch here, you know, kind of uh, under the radar a little bit because we're talking about spring football and, and we kind of had that at that AD conversation back in March with the departure of Trev Alberts and then the the quick turnaround by Nebraska to get Dannon from Washington to come to Nebraska. We haven't heard a lot from him since then. He had the whirlwind uh, travel to the, the NCAA basketball tournaments to see the Nebraska men and the women. We saw video of him with the football team out on the lawn of the state capitol. And then he's been a bit quiet, um, did do that interview with Adam Rittenberg from from ESPN last week. And, and you know, he's been active and in, in speaking to some boosters. But, you know, really things are, are sneaking up on on us in that it's a big time for Nebraska athletics here over the next two weeks. The spring game really presents a huge opportunity for the athletic director to get in front of of large amounts of fans, donors, and potential donors. So all of the things that Troy Dannon, as the brand new AD, has on his plate at Nebraska are starting to come, are going to come to the surface over these next couple of weeks as he brings a ton of his constituents into town for the Nebraska spring game on April 27th. Hey Mitch, this this idea just sort of hit my head. Did you see, uh, did you happen to see what Old Miss did for their spring game over the weekend, I did not. So they, um, they, they basically did no football whatsoever. They, they played okay. like a, a seven on seven flag football game. That was the closest they got. They also did like a dunk contest, a hot dog eating contest. Joey Chestnut was there. I mean, it was just a complete like this is not about football at all. And so I'm going to wind this back to Dan, even though the football coach would have most of the say on that. But I want to wind this back to Troy Dan in a little bit. It'll just be really interesting to see how he approaches stuff like that, you know, whether it's um, uniforms or um, you know how much autonomy coaches have in 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 things like that, and how Nebraska is positioned. Like a lot of that stuff has at Nebraska been kind of how it feels, and and I credit Trev Alberts because he had a really good sense of kind of. You know, and, and and he was really good at keeping it all kind of tied together. Uh, maybe sometimes too rigidly, I'd say. Trev could just host the whole event. I mean, he could be the MC, yeah. the host, the expert, yeah. everything. And that, I don't think that's Dannon. Yeah, you're right. So, how does he kind of think about stuff like that? Um, and, and and how much does he know about the fan base to understand how they're going to react? Because that's always that's always an important piece of the puzzle, especially when you're a new guy in town it's had it's had to be a time of quick education for Troy Dannon because you can't really fake it when you when you when it's the spring game weekend and 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 to your point about old miss the the you know the 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 dual there's a dual focus um now for these colleges when it comes to spring football and maybe for old miss the end of spring football had nothing to do with football it was just about uh, getting your message out to donors trying to raise money have some fun uh, spread the spread the brand a bit. Nebraska certainly will do that, but it won't be um, it won't be so uh, it won't be so obvious that it, that it doesn't have football uh, importance. You know, Matt Rule yeah. did mention last week that the spring game expect the spring game to be a little more vanilla than it was last year, and he said for a number of reasons he didn't list those reasons. You know, some of that would be, uh, of course, for scouting purposes. But uh, and you have the freshman quarterbacks. You don't want to put too much on tape for UTEP and Colorado uh, with what those guys can do. Although I think they have a, a general idea of of who da- who Daniel Kalen and Dylan Raiola uh, are. 
but uh, it's it's not going to be the same thing we saw last year. It, it'll be a little bit bland. Um, and I think the the other side of it with the non football related stuff, especially with the brand new AD, it's an opportunity for him to meet a lot of people um, that rises in importance here in 2024. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And and by the way, I don't think Nebraska, um, especially under Matt Rule, uh, would ever do anything like that. They, they, the, the classic line in Nebraska has always been like it's they want it to be about the football. Um, so it'll be about yeah. the football. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have fun during it. So I'll be curious to see kind of how they set things up next, uh, next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. I think we're, uh, I think we're wrapping this thing up. Connor, you want to, you want to finish us, finish us out. Yeah. One more final thought here. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon fire TV in the free fire TV channels app locked on sports. Today is what it's called. It's here for you. 24 seven covering the top. Sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today. It's now available on the free Fire TV channels app.